Hi, in this video I talk about getting rid of aphids, squash bugs, chipmunks, and mosquitoes, as well as drawing beneficial insects into the fight. I also mention some great non-chemical solutions that are excellent at getting rid of pests. <sighs> While doing my morning rounds a few days ago, I noticed that the sweet potatoes didn't look quite right. They looked almost fuzzy. And then upon closer inspection, I realized we have aphids. My advice whenever running into aphids in the garden is stay calm and get ladybugs. Ladybugs are actually very easy to purchase online and they usually come in pretty large quantities. And so even if only a few hang around, they are voracious aphid eaters. So the mailman just came by and dropped off the ladybugs and the praying mantises. So uh, I'm gonna get them out of the heat and get them to work. There you go. Something to keep in mind when using insects to remove harmful insects from your garden or greenhouse is that you need to make sure that you purchase a species that is non-invasive to your area. Now, I'm not gonna tell you what species I got uh, because they're non-invasive to my area, but make sure that when you order them, you check out those details. Sometimes the cheaper ones are the ones you don't wanna get. Uh, the other thing I was gonna mention is, um, you know, I, you can only order them in fairly large quantities, at least that I could find. Uh, in this case, it was 1,500. Uh, not all of them made it. As you can see, there's quite a few dead. Um, but there will be quite a few ladybugs eventually that don't have a job. And so I got praying mantises, a couple of those, to clean up the population that doesn't have a job. Okay, so let's let those ladybugs do their work. When it comes to thinking about insects in the garden and in the greenhouse, I try to take kind of a broad, holistic approach. I have to recognize that these are ecosystems, albeit very small ones, they're ecosystems, and so I try to treat them as such. I try to avoid using chemicals whenever possible because chemicals can be harmful to both beneficial and harmful uh, insects. And they can also get into the groundwater, they can get into the air, we'll breathe it in, and we can also be uh, introduced to chemicals by what we touch when handling uh, items that we've sprayed. That doesn't happen when you have ladybugs or praying mantises doing the work for you. Gotcha. Every morning, part of my morning ritual is looking for harmful pests. Last year, I had an infestation of squash bugs in my uh, zucchini and squash. And so now I check every morning to make sure that there are no new bugs. And when I see them, I get them and I squish them. And so you have to keep up on it. And if I found that if I'm doing this, if I keep up, I look for the new ones that are emerging and I kill them, it seems to kind of head off the infestation problem. So not having a lot of insects in a greenhouse can actually be a challenge because your tomatoes, for example, are not getting pollinated. And so you're going to have to do it yourself. And so what you do is you have to, in this instance, I'm using a pipe cleaner and I use it to just gently touch the center of each flower a few times. And I go around and I touch all the flowers and then I do it again to make sure that I'm spreading the pollen between the male and the female flowers on the tomato plants. Another way that I can have helpful pollinators access my tomatoes is by changing out a couple of my windows for screens. And specifically, I'm going to use half inch hardware cloth. This allows bees to come in, but it doesn't allow cabbage butterflies to come in. And most of my greenhouse is planted with some variation of a brassica. There's cauliflower, there's uh, broccoli, there's kale, there's Brussels sprouts, and cabbage butterflies would love to get in here because they would absolutely decimate it in no time. So that's one benefit to being able to put screens uh, in a couple of these windows. It also has the added benefit of helping with the cooling of the greenhouse, allowing heat to escape.
For me, no discussion about partners in the garden can go without mentioning house wrens. House wrens are a fantastic helper in the garden. Now they're this tiny little bird, really tiny, I mean not much bigger than a hummingbird, but they don't know that they're small. In fact, they think they're huge because they are very territorial, very bossy, and they sing amazing songs. But the thing that I love about house wrens is they eat their weight in insects every day. And so I've gone to great lengths to encourage them to live here on our property. And I've put house wren specific birdhouses all around our property. And to my delight, they use them. And so my advice is always invite house wrens to the party. Pests in the garden take many different forms. We know about the aphids and the squash bugs, but for me, a particularly challenging pest is chipmunks and mice to a lesser degree. They are so invasive and they even dig around the foundation of my house, which could be a costly mistake if I let them do it. And so I have to work very hard to actively manage the population. And one of the tools that I have found works best, and believe me, I have tried a lot, is the chipmunkinator. I didn't come up with the name. That's the actual name of the tool. And when it comes to disposing of chipmunks and mice that we've caught in traps, each of us has to decide for ourselves what we're most comfortable with, uh, whether it's a catch and release kind of a situation or if there are other options. The last pest solution I wanted to talk about has to do with mosquitoes. Now, while not specifically a garden pest, if you want to be in the garden, they're a pest. I have spent a lot of money over the years trying to find what works for me. Uh, I've even spent money on the rather expensive uh, traps. Some of them are called like the Mosquito Delito, or something along those lines that use a propane tank and a, and a combustion chamber that produces carbon dioxide. The mosquitoes are attracted, a fan sucks them in. You get the idea. I have found that I spent more time replacing parts on those, and I think that's the way they're designed. I think they're designed to have the user need the company. That's not true with the solution that I found works more consistently, and that is the Dynatrap. Now, the Dynatrap, it runs on a similar process in that the, the bugs, specifically, are attracted to the light, they're sucked down through a fan and then down into the basket chamber where they eventually dry up and die. Now, they're not specifically designed to be used for mosquitoes, but I have found adding octanol lures makes it so that you catch a lot of mosquitoes as well. And so, Dynatrap, fantastic solution for catching mosquitoes. So there you have it, my solutions for some of the most annoying insects that I have in my garden. I'd love to know what your thoughts are in the comments below. I also left links in the description. See you next time. And if you liked this video, you might like these videos.